Um, hello, and thanks to Aharon and to uh, Gad Yair for uh, organizing and convening uh, this conference. Uh, I know much of out of thoughts these days goes to the current crisis uh, in governmentality, but I wish to offer some remarks on popular resistance that draws on the crisis that happened in May 2021, and they are actually connected. During what was later termed by Palestinians the Dignity Intifada or the Unity Intifada. Palestinian citizens in Israel, especially those living in the so-called mixed cities, found themselves in an early situation similar to the capricious Israeli military rule period that lasted from 48 until 66. In that historical moment, the Israeli state granted citizenship to the remaining Palestinians, a population already decimated by the Nakba, while concurrently curtailing their rights, establishing judicial revenues for the further disposition of their homes, yeah. suppressing their capacity to resist, and punishing those who attempted to return. Just decades earlier, Zionist settlers had first arrived to Palestine not to eliminate, they, many of them refugees, came to install their sovereignty in a homeland for the Jews. But their practices did take eliminatory functions for the local Palestinian inhabitants. Jumping back to 48, the early state years were the very moment in which the relationship between the newly sovereign Israeli state and the Palestinian citizens first took on its character. This moment certainly was not the inception of coexistence. It entailed the imposition of hierarchized citizenship and classification, the enforcement of advanced marginality, the invention and apprehension by Zionists and Jewish Israelis of Palestinians as socially other and their desovernization. A state of emergency was declared, which enabled a coercive state apparatus to enact its sovereignty through converting resisting Palestinian indigenous inhabitants to internal enemy citizens, criminalizing their political struggle and stripping down their subjectivity to their life. That state of emergency is continuous and indeed has resurfaced in the violent proceedings of May 2021 and until today in different occasions. The enduring dispositions of Palestinians in Sheikh Jarrah in Jerusalem in the past years and decades instantiate the perpetuation of colonization, not only by the state directly, but by a settler citizen group backed by state power and emboldened by its Jabotinsk and right-wing leaders. We have seen this Judaization and creeping land confiscation processes before across the Zionist movement and Israeli state histories, especially in 48 and 67, in geographies like the Jalil, Hagalil, and the Naqab. Settler colonialism is not a unified substantive identity. It consists of manifold Asians' desires and mechanisms, and the attacks on Palestinian citizens in Lydia and other mixed cities by Jewish Israeli settler citizens demonstrate how the frontier remains open as a place to conquer. These very cities where violence has sprouted recently have been the manifestation of the projects of disposition and elimination through surveillance, economic suppression, separation, and lawfare. Unfortunately, the dignity of the father was nothing new. It may have been made invisibilized to some, but it's a reflection of the continuity of a broader settler colonial crisis. If we aim to understand the roots of the crisis, we should remember that the context of the relation between Israel and the Palestinian citizens is rooted in the history of the inception of the Israeli state. Israel, as a settler colonial state, has grasped a claim to the monopoly on violence, no less through its vast military apparatus. It first accumulated this capacity by enacting violence upon an indigenous population it didn't see as part of the Jewish national ethnos.
This has been the root of all subsequent asymmetry. There has been no parity, nor two sides on an even playing field. The Israeli state and some of its settler citizens have been waging war against the Palestinians. The monopoly on violence has been shaped by the collision of a state and its Jewish citizen subjects. I mean by this to identify how Israeli citizen subjects have first been recruited by the Israeli state in the project of land appropriation and accumulation disposition, Second, became implicated in the maintenance of violence through compulsory military service. And third, actively perpetrated violence. In the case of events, of the events of May in 2000s, it's crucial to refer to the words of the former minister of public security, Amir Ohana, relating to the settlers, to the Mitnahlin, that to the Mitnahel, that killed a Palestinian citizens and citizen in Lid. Quote, law-abiding citizens carrying weapons are force multiplayer in the hands of the authorities for the immediate neutralization of threat and danger. And the last two years, we have witnessed more and more of that. Importantly, the state grasp on power is feasible only through conditions of coercion and political violence, because otherwise the maintenance of asymmetry would be unthinkable. But Palestinians and the very few Jewish Israelis who have allied with them have for decades been imagining what a different configuration of a state and society could be, a decolonized one. This leads me, leads me to second remark. Palestinians have been and continue to organize and resist. On May 18th, 2021, Palestinian citizens in Israel for the first time initiated a strike that spread to the occupied Palestinian territories, to the refugee camps in neighboring Arab countries and across the diaspora. They went on strike to protest the disposition in Sheikh Jarrah, the attacks at Al-Aqsa and the mixed cities and the brutality in Gaza and the enduring assaults of Palestinian on Palestinian life. Palestinian citizens in Israel struggle with all other Palestinians for their existence and dignity. The May 2000s popular protest was not led by political leaders. It was a grassroots effort led by Palestinian citizens of Israel, mainly by the young generation, which reunited the dispersed Palestinian in this mass for, format for one of the first time since the Great Arab Revolt in 1936. Palestinians formed popular and emergency committee to assemble a resistant practice, praxis. They used poetry, art, and literature to express the otherwise inexpressible. Palestinians lack formal territorial sovereignty and the infrastructure to support themselves, but they creatively engage and practice through popular, social, and political struggles, alternative practices. We must develop sharper conceptions of agency vis-a-vis -vis the state of emergency, because the imposition of bare life is not and never has been accepted from below. We require sociological terms to work with the acknowledgement that agency is not theoretical. It is practiced on the ground. A testimony written by the Palestinian feminist activist Samah Salaimi, the testimony by Samah Salaimi reflects some of the conditions of livability of Palestinians in Lib or Lod during the May uh, 2001 events. Quote, I visited the burned and destroyed homes of citizens and the children in aid clothes were playing among the ashes in complete innocence and talking about gas bombs and the night settlers attack as if they were adventures in a computer game. In the Hanawi family in the old city, more than 15 children learned about the meaning of the Molotov cocktails and the M16 refile that settlers carry while attacking them at night. 
In the Qaddura family, a 14-year-old boy was shot by a policeman, and he is now detained and has not yet received proper treatment. In front of the mosque and the church, guard shifts and an aid center, Tamir Nafar, a Palestinian singer, is in a state of national and artistic mobilization in defense of his family and the inhabitants of the city. Fida Ishadi, a political activist and a member of the city council is busy dealing with the arrest of young people. In the community center, the headquarters of the humanitarian aid was opened, full of human provisions and energies. The women and the young women are working restlessly with the youth in the factory of goodness. Samah may be reflecting on human tragedy here, but what she really identifies as a form of popular sovereignty, to borrow from Amal Bishara. This is the organization of care in the face of state abandonment and assault. She recounts not only the imagining of a different kind of world, but the enacting of it through emergency committees, resilience, and mutual aid. This, I pose, is popular resistance. Palestinians were not asking for return to a normal, to the normal, to return to normal is to return to the formation of the Jewish and democratic state, to the nation state law, to structural discrimination against Palestinian citizens, to the occupation, to the Gaza siege, and to a form of sociality where the lives of millions of Palestinians are controlled and governed by a settler state. This is the normality that liberal discourse is seeking because it means the privileges of those implicated in colonial violence, primarily Ashkenazi Jews, as continued profiters remain untouched. Meanwhile, the Palestinian population will continue to live under ongoing violence in its different forms, ongoing emergency and domination. The focus of this conference is on non violent resistance. What I think the case of the Palestinian citizen Israel adds to this conversation is the sociological phenomenon of popular sovereignty and resistance. By popular, I mean to emphasize how the very habits, skill, practices, and dispositions of social movement mobilization of resisting oppressive forces amidst the lack of formal territorial sovereignty are ingrained among the Palestinians whose habitus reflects the reality of living in a social world enveloped by quotidian violence. This is not to say that popular resistance is spontaneous or easily achieved, but rather that a society subject to differentiated violence has learned how to respond. I also don't mean to say that every single practice can be considered resistance. This would delude the meaning. However, under a settler colonial structure in which disposition and displacement of the indigenous is necessary for settler continuity, what the indigenous Hawaii scholar Kehulani Kawinini terms eliminations of the native as native, those practices that retain indigenous life and dignity defy the settler impulse. The cliche that existence is resistance reflects the possibility that efforts to ascertain the conditions for collective survival are a form of refusal, refusal to be replaced. Ultimately, whether popular resistance becomes powerful enough to counter the unrelenting forces of settler colonial violence depends on a contingent dialectical relationship. To end, I want to tell you about my day today. I am zooming in because I spent the day touring the Jenin refugee camp, and these pictures are from the Jenin refugee camp today, which is now recovering from the most recent Israeli assault that wrought so much distraction and fear. We walked through the literal ruins and destroyed edifices. But what I observed was not despair. We came to the Freedom Theater in Jenin, which had been occupied by Israeli forces and suffered infrastructural damages from bombings. Remarkable is how, in the wake of these brutal attacks, 
discussions are underway for creating a series of drama therapy workshops for traumatized children and healthcare providers. The theater has survived and remains a place where Palestinian can imagine and enact alternative ways of being amid relenting violence. I take their example of popular resistance, of daring to stage dignified Palestinian life as an inspiration. Thank you.